our healing. And God, we thank you that we are in your presence this wonderful morning. We thank you. We give you glory, Lord. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. You, Lord, you are worthy. And no one can worship you for me. For all the things you've done for me. And no one can worship you for me. He's my worship. All of
together. Your love is special. Your love is special. Because you feel my heart. You feel my heart. With so much peace and joy. With so much peace and joy. Because you're amazing. Father, we bless you this morning. We worship you. We exalt you. We proclaim you are the king that is worthy of praise. You are worthy of glory. You are worthy of honor. You are worthy of all adoration. How we exalt and uplift your holy name even this morning and declare that none is like you, Jehovah God. We declare that you are the Lord that is great and mighty. And you are holy and you are worthy of all the praise, O oh God. We thank you for your love and your care. We thank you for your guidance, O oh God. We thank you for your leading. We thank you for your power, O oh God. We thank you for allowing every one of us to be in this house that is called by your name. And this morning, mighty Father, we come to lift your name on high and exalt you and adore you, Jehovah. We declare none is like you, Jehovah God. You are the Lord that is great and mighty. You are holy, you are worthy, Jehovah. Your name is a great name, O oh God. How we exalt you this morning. How we magnify and adore your holy name this morning, Jehovah God. We declare none is like you, Jehovah. Be exalted and be magnified and be adored. Mighty God, even as we surrender this service unto you, Jehovah, we pray that your presence shall be together with us, Lord, that you may meet with us, O God. Mighty Father, that you may, O God, minister to every person that has come in, O God, in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray that you may be together with us this day. We pray that you may cleanse us, O God, forgive every sin, O God, and everything that we have done that is against your will. Father, we pray that you may forgive us and cleanse us this morning. That we may be worthy even to stand before your presence, O God. That mighty Father, that may please you to come and commune with us this day. 
in the name of Jesus. Lord, we bless you and exalt and adore you. We declare you are the king, the king that is worthy of praise, the king that is worthy of glory and honor. Lord God Almighty, be exalted, O oh God. Be exalted in our midst this morning, O oh God. Mighty Father, we lift your name up high and we declare none is like you, Jehovah. Have your way, God Almighty, in our lives, O oh God, in our services, in our nation, O oh God. We pray that you may have your way, Jehovah. We put down every other plan of the enemy and every opposition to your will. We destroy and uproot in the name of Jesus. And God will plant and build submission and obedience unto you in the name of Jesus, that your name, O oh God, shall be honored in our nation, Jehovah God, and in our lives, that your name shall be honored, O oh God. Father, we surrender all unto you, Jehovah. We declare your presence, Jehovah God, even upon our lives, O oh God, upon every one of us, O oh God, complete healing upon everyone that may be feeling sick and unwell, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, even upon our love, Bishop Jehovah, we declare complete healing in the name of Jesus, because you are the Lord that hears us, O oh God. And we know you are answering our prayers, O oh God, in the name of the Lord. Father, we bless you this morning. We exalt and adore you, Jehovah, and declare none is like you, Jehovah God. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your care and your guidance, O oh Lord. Father, we surrender everything unto you this morning. May you have your way, Jehovah God. May your Holy Spirit take full control, God. In every session that we shall have this day, God Almighty, we welcome your presence that you may be together with us. For this we pray in Jesus' holy name. Amen. 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 Uh, hallelujah, church. Praise God. Hey, praise God. Uh, I want you to increase your volume. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Choir, I want to have you. Me, I'm missing a song. Manasseh. I'm missing a song. I don't know which one. Yeah? So choir, come and welcome the, the, the speaker of the word. Please give us a song very briefly. Uh, yeah, I know, I know you are not very planned, so you can even give us a praise and worship or a song. Just one. Yeah, I'm missing one. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Uh, to Simame, as I ask Alan project for that, for us, that song that says, Ninajua ewe buwana huniachi. Amen. Amen. Turn to your neighbor, tell him, tell her, Ninajua ewe buwana huniachi. Thank you, Jesus. Umeahidi ewe buwana Uniachi Hadi mwisho wa dahari ulisema Uniachi Wewe ni Mungu uliye mwaminifu siku zote Mimi ninaiweka imani yangu kwako Bwana Hey, me a hidi e we bwana. Oh, uni achi, uni achi. Ani wisho ada hari uri se. Oh, uni achi. We we ni mungo mami. We we ni mungo ni e wa. Oh oh oh. Oh, 
kuita mama wanaweza kuniacha marafiki nao wanaweza nigeuka mara kwa mara madui wanizunguka nitaishi kwa ahadi yako bwana Thank you so much choir for that. Uh, surely the Lord has promised will never leave us nor forsake us. He's with us all the days of our life. So we have that confidence in him that he will never leave us uh, nor forsake us. And we have that confidence. Thank you so much for that powerful ministration. Uh, without taking any more time, I want us to give the Lord a powerful hand clap as we welcome our Pastor Patrick. Uh, to continue with the service from here. So let's give the Lord a powerful hand clap as we welcome Pastor Patrick uh, to go on with the service in the name of Jesus. Take your seats in the presence of the Lord. Thank you once again for coming to this wonderful Sunday morning service. I know God has a message for all of us today. And I pray that God will uh, um, open our ears to what he's saying to each and every one of us in this beautiful service. Father, we surrender ourselves to you and we surrender and submit ourselves to your spirit. We pray that in this service, Lord, that your voice will be heard, not my voice, but your voice in this service in the name of Jesus, that, Lord, you will speak directly to the heart of your children that have gathered here this morning. There are those that have come desiring, Lord, that uh, you speak to them. Those that have come feeling not, uh, not sure of what's going to happen next. There are those, Lord, that are, are feeling discouraged in their hearts. There are those that have been feeling oppressed by the enemy. But in this service, our God, you are all in all. And I ask you to take full charge and full control in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I thank you and I give you glory. And it is in Jesus' mighty name that I pray and believe. Somebody say amen. Thank you so much. Um, praise the name of the Lord. Amen. So I want to welcome all of us, even those of you that are um, uh, following us online to this wonderful service. May the Lord continue to minister to you. I know God has a word for each and every one of you. It doesn't matter what you're going through. I know that the Lord is going to minister to you in a powerful way. And in an awesome way, in the mighty name of Jesus, just, just hold on and wait on him and he is faithful. I want us to read the word of God from the, uh, the book of Kings, Second Kings chapter 6. I want to read from verse number 10. If you can give me from verse number 10. Then the king of Israel sent someone to the place which the man of God had told him. Thus he warned him that he was watchful there. Not just once or twice. Therefore the heart of the king of Syria was greatly troubled by this thing. And he called his servant and said to them, Will you not show me which of you, which of us is for the king of Israel? And one and one of his servants said, None, my lord. 
O king, but Elisha, the prophet who is in Israel, tells the king of Israel the words that you speak in your bedroom. And so he said, go and see where he is, where he is, that I may send and get him. And it was told him, saying, surely he is in Dothan. I want you to fast track to verse 20. Give me 20. So it was then, um, they came to Samaria, that Elisha said, Lord, open the eyes of these men, that they may see. And the Lord opened their eyes, and they saw, and they, they were inside Samaria. Now when the king of Israel saw them, he said to Elisha, My father, shall I kill them? Shall I kill them? But he answered, You shall not kill them. You, would you kill those whom you have taken captive with your sword? And you bow, and set food and, uh, and water before them, that they may eat and drink and go to their master. Then, they, then, then he prepared a great feast for them, and they ate and drank and sent, sent them away, and they went to their master. So the bands of Syrian raid, raiders came no more, to the land of Israel. Give me the next verse. It happened after this that Ben-Hadad, king of Syria, gathered all his army and went and besieged Samaria. And there was a great famine in Samaria, and indeed they besieged it until donkey's head was sold for 80 shekels of silver and one-fourth of cub of dove droppings are for five shekels of silver. Then as the king of Israel was passing by the wall, a woman cried out saying, Help me, my lord, O king. And he said, If the lord does not help you, where can I find help for you? From the threshing floor or from the wine press? Then the king said to her, What is troubling you? And she answered, This woman, she said, uh, said to me, give your son that we may eat today and we will eat my son tomorrow. So we boiled my son and ate him. And I said to him on the next day, give your son that we may eat him as well. But she has hidden her son. Now it happened that the king, when the king heard these words of the woman, that he tore his clothes and he passed by, as he passed by the wall, and the people looked, and there underneath he had sackcloth on his body. Father, we pray that you bless the reading of your word today. What you want to speak to us through this word, we pray that it shall be clear to us in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, it's a long text, but I pray that the Lord will help you to go back to it slowly. Go and digest, you know, as we shall be uh, getting to understand something from the word of God here. You know, Samaria was so besieged, as we have seen in that text, there were enemies. The Armenians had come and they had surrounded the city and they could not go out. Supplies that were coming to that city were cut off. There was no way to help the people inside the city. And the city was feeling helpless. Remember the verses we just read above? The same, same people had attacked again. But when they came, they found Elisha. And Elisha caused, you know, the, the, uh, prayed that the Lord will blinden these people. And they were all blinded. They could not see. And they were taken right into the city, Samaria. And when the king of Samaria... Asked the, the man of God, Elisha, should I kill them? He said, why, why, why do you kill them? Just give them food and send them back to their master. And these armies were so humiliated because they had come to attack, but, in, but instead of them attacking, they were attacked. They were taken hostage by blindness. They were taken right into the heart of the city. When they opened their eyes, they saw themselves surrounded without armor surrounded and they were given food they were given water to drink 
Then they were told, go back to your master and don't ever think of coming back again. And they went. But the verse we just read there, we saw that these people didn't have years. They came again. The enemy of our lives, it doesn't matter how many times you defeat him. You know, as long as you are on this earth, remember as we have been saying, we are on a battle. We continue fighting every day. The enemy will fight you today and you will get a lot of victory. The Lord helping you, getting a lot of victory. But if you relax, my friend, the enemy will come again. And this is exactly what happened. I'm just thinking, if I was part of that army of the Armenians, I would not probably go back. Because the last time we went, we were blinded. Our eyes were closed. We could not see. But this time, you know, the, the king is telling us to go and attack again. Probably I would not want to be in that army. I would feel like, uh -uh, I don't want to be blind the second time. But these guys, just being who they are, like the devil himself, they came again. And when they came this time, they did not enter into the city, but they surrounded the city. The Bible says that they made sure they, they brought what, they, 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 they took the city hostage. There was a siege on the city. Praise the name of the Lord. And the title of the message today, if you are writing, is the siege is lifted. Praise the name of the Lord. The siege is lifted. You know, these people surrounded. They surrounded Samaria such that they could not get supplies. The transporters who would come from outside to bring in food, the merchants who would go out and bring in, you know, things that they need. Just like you understand, the economy of a country is not, you know, dependent on its own self. It depends a lot on the neighbors. It depends a lot on the people, even from very far. Our country, Kenya, we export a lot of things from here. But we also import a lot of things to this nation. We get things from other countries. And supposing all the airports and the seaports are shut... That there is nothing that is going to come in from anywhere. One of the things that happen is that prices of commodities, because now the shortage is there, prices of commodities starts to go up. Uh huh. And as that happens, you know, people who have the money will be able to survive. But those people that do not have money will have a lot of trouble. But even those people with money, they will only survive but for a while. Especially if the siege, if there is a, dis if there is a continued, a prolonged you know, period of time where the siege is happening and there is nothing that is coming in from wherever. And this is exactly what happened to this city. Samaria was cut off from the world. They could not get anything from anywhere. So they ate everything they had. And when they had finished everything, then it became now necessary to survive. And when it comes to the point of surviving, people can do anything. You heard of that pilot that fell uh, with his, you know, uh, uh, chopper, I think, in, a, in, in, a, in somewhere in the, in the forest. I don't remember where, but in this country. And he survived for a number of days alone. And when they asked him how he survived, and he said he would drink his urine because he had no water. There is nothing. He's, he's just cut off completely. When it comes to surviving, people do all kinds of funny things. People do all kinds of what we'd call gross. They do things that you know, are, in, are, in, are, are unimaginable. People want just to survive. And this is what happened here in Samaria. The word of God tells us, because of lack of food and lack of supplies, the people now resorted to doing other things. And we have seen that even, you know, the dung of doves, Mavi and Jiwa, that one was very precious. You, you go and take it home and you, I don't know if they were boiling it or frying it. I don't know even if they had cooking oil or I don't know what, what, how they made it or baked it. I don't understand. But these people, were, were, it was a delicacy. The head of a donkey, 
animals that were considered unclean, things that you could not ordinarily eat, they were considered unclean. But this time round, because of the siege, because of the problem, the, donk, the heads of the donkey, not even now the, the meat, because I believe now the steak and the, and the rest of the body of, the, of, of this donkey was a delicacy maybe in the palace. But the head and the, and, and, and the hooves and the, those other things, now they were available for the rest of the people. And the word of God tells us the head of a donkey was so precious. It was so expensive. What was considered unclean? Now this time people don't want even to know whether it's clean or unclean. All I need is to survive. Praise the Lord. And they ate and they bought it, those that had money. Those that didn't have money had a lot of trouble. They were not able to survive. It was not possible. Some of them died. But now, as the siege continued, as the, 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 the enemies of the people of God continued to camp around there, women now resorted to eat their babies. And you know how precious children are, and especially to mothers. And these women decided even to go to, to, to make agreements with their friends. And they said, let's eat my baby today, you know, and then tomorrow we will boil yours. And they agreed. You can think of that. Just imagine that. Women, you know, you, you go and you strangle your child, you cut the head off, you boil the baby whole, and it becomes a delicacy because they wanted to survive. But one of the women was a bit cleverer than the other one. Told this one, let's boil yours today. Then we will boil mine tomorrow. But when the day came, the child was already hidden. Because the mother was like, no, I can't boil my child. No way. Until these women cried. And the king heard it. And when the king heard that, it was like, how, what, what can I do for you? If God cannot help you, how can I help you? Praise the name of the Lord. Those people that we depend on, sometimes they also get to the very end. They also don't know what else to do. And the king was so infuriated. And he said, you know, by tomorrow a time like this, uh, Elisha will not have a head. And he was so angry. And why was he directing his anger to Elisha? Elisha was just a prophet. You know, this man was so angry at God. Why have you allowed this thing to happen to us? But because as a king, there is no way he can attack God. He cannot reach God. So he reached the servants. He reached the prophet. And he said, tomorrow, a time like this, this servant of God, his head will not be there. And Elisha was sitting in his house, and the elders were sitting with him. And the king sent man ahead of him, and before the messengers came to him, he said to the elders, do you see? This son of murderers uh, has sent someone to take away my heart, my head. Look, when the messenger comes, shut the door and hold him fast at the door. Is not the sound of his master's feet behind him? Go to the next one. Move, move, move to the next one. And while he was still talking with them, there was a messenger coming down to him. And then the king said, surely this calamity is from the Lord. Why should I wait for the Lord any longer? Mm -hmm. Try to move fast, Kidogo. Are we okay? All right. So the man of God, he was, you know, he was, he, he was, he was kind of now distraught. He was like, this man, they are coming now to take my head and I'm not going to wait, you know. And this is what happened at that particular moment. Elisha decided when the king comes, this is what I'm going to tell him. That a time like this tomorrow, don't just be angry, Mr. King. A time like this tomorrow, there will be food that is being sold at the entrance of the gates of Samaria. Praise the name of the Lord. 
and we know the story. You can go and read it for yourself. Also proceed to chapter 7 and you will be able to see the whole story coming down there. In chapter 7, the story continues. And one of the things that I want us to know, at the gates of Samaria, there were some people. There were some lepers. Say lepers. Lepers that were sent out of the city. What Wambao, they, they, were, they, were, they were an outcast. They were not supposed to be in the city. They were not supposed to, to, to stay you know, with the people. They were not supposed to interact. And I think that story now you can find it from chapter 7. They were not supposed to interact with the people. They were, they were thrown out. They were out of the city. Praise the name of the Lord. But now this is what happened. These lepers outside the city, remember, Samaria has been cut off. People in there are having a lot of trouble. People in there are eating, you know, the dung of doves. People in there are eating their children. People in there are eating donkey's head. Everything is expensive. The economy has shifted. It is difficult in there. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, these people were outside. Now, who was better? The people outside or the people inside? You know, I looked at the story and I'm like, the people outside, probably, probably. Huh? Although they were outside the wall of the city, they could not be allowed to go inside the city. But even them, their life was even times two. It was harder, difficult than the people inside. It was so much difficult out here. If it is difficult in the city, it was far much harder for these people outside. And so the people in this, outside the city, the, the lepers, they talked to one another. And there were four of them. And they said, now, why should we stay here and die? If we go into the city, the Arameans are there. If we go into their camps, we will die. They will kill us. If we go into the city, the watchmen will not allow us to go in. They know we are lepers. So we stay here, we die. We go, we die. Death is death anyhow. Whether in the city, whether in the camp of the Arameans, or here, it is death. And we are moving. And they made a resolve that they are going. Praise the name of the Lord. Time comes when things push you to the wall until you make a resolve. I will move. I will go anyhow. And this is what the word of God tells us. These people moved. And the mo moment they started moving, and the moment they reached the, 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 the camps, they were coming closer, and there were four of them. And you know what happens with the lepers? Because of their disease, uh, they, were, they were meant um, to, to notify people as they came. You know, they had uh, kind of like bells on their clothes. As they walked, as they marched, you know, they would make noises. And people would hear the clinging of the bells. And they would know a leper is coming. And when you hear the bells, you know, you just have to but move. And this is what these people decided. And remember, lepers are people, you know, and that disease would eat up. Their fingers would eat up their toes. So they had stumps, not even legs. So they could not walk properly. And as they moved for them, as they marched towards the city, the Bible tells us, and God amplified the sounds of these people. And as they moved inside, you know, their sound to the people in the camp sounded like a big army that is coming. Hallelujah. It sounded like a very big army that was coming against them. And it sounded like a very vast army, an army with chariots. It sounded like an army, a big army that is coming with horses and chariots. And the Remian says, you know what? The king of Samaria has hired some people to come and attack us. And for that reason, we are not going to wait here. So they all took off. The Bible tells us that the people that were, 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 were laying siege on the city, the Arameans, they left in a hurry and they took off quickly. They ran for their lives. And as they were running, because you know when you are attacked and when, when you feel attacked or threatened, uh, you know you don't carry anything. You go the way you are. Those people left everything behind. And some of those that thought they could carry something, on the way, as they were running, they felt these things are baggage to us. And they dropped them on the way. And they continued to run for their lives. And you know, as they ran, uh, 
These guys came and reached to the tents. And when they came to the camp, the camp was empty. Glory to God. The camp was empty. God amplified the, the, the footsteps of these people. It is sounded to them like a great army that is coming with horses and with chariots. And they were only lepers. Let me say this. When God starts to fight your battles, your enemies will be confused. When God starts to fight your battles, your enemies will but release the siege. They will have to leave their position where they have been standing and they have been taking position for a long time. And they could have been there for so long. Take it in your life. You could be struggling with something. When I started this message some two weeks ago, we talked about battles and we said, God told Jeremiah to uproot, to pull out, to destroy, to throw away, and then to plant and to build. And we said in our lives, there are things we need to identify. If you're going to experience recovery, as our bishop has been laboring on recovery, you know, he has been talking about it. And we are saying, you know, if you're going to experience recovery, Ah, in the lives of each and every one of us, in our church, in our businesses, in our children, in our spouses, in every sphere of our lives, in our nation. If you are going to experience recovery, my friend, there is a point of pulling out things. Praise the name of the Lord. There are things that may have stayed there for so long. And we said some of them may have been stayed there for so long that you came and you found them. And you are still struggling with them. Look at the siege in Samaria. It was there for a long time that all the supplies were cut off. And every food that was in reserve for these people in Samaria, all of them, all of it was, you know, uh, uh, taken up. It was used up by the people. It tells you it was not a few days that they were there. They were there for a long time. And they ensured that they cut off every kind of supply. Nobody could go out. Nobody could go in. Every person had to stay in. And they wanted to kill them like that by hunger. And you know, our God came through. Praise the name of the Lord. Jeremiah was told, pull out and then plant and build. Last Sunday we talked about repentance. And we said, when we have now discovered what it is that it is, in, is in our families that has stayed for a long time, that has been oppressing us and causing us to experience defeat in our life, then it is high time that we ask God for forgiveness. We repent on behalf of our own, on behalf of our parents, on behalf of our grandparents, and going backwards, we continue to repent for the sins of our forefathers. Amen. And as we repent for all of those, then God in heaven hears and he will forgive us and he will give us a new start. And I also said, you know, that when we repent, you know, God gives us the power to overcome and to receive our recovery in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Now today, now we are looking at this thing that there is a situation that we need to go out and the siege now has removed there is a point of conquering. There is a point of shouting and saying, surely the Lord has done it. And that's why we are talking about this siege. It was stayed for a long time. The children of Israel were, they were in there. They could not come out. They had no food. They had no supply. They had nothing inside. They were eating children. But now you see, the lepers, God using these people. Ah, uh, And then causing them and causing their feet you know, steps to be amplified, to sound like mighty army. The enemies took off. The enemies of your life. It does not matter how long they have been there, my brother. It doesn't matter how long they have been there, my sister. But there is time for them to take off. And that time is here in the mighty name of Jesus. When the Lord starts to fight your battles, you will not fight any longer. Like the word of God in Zechariah says, it's not by might. Not by power, but by the Spirit of the Lord. Everything that God wants done in 2021, we shall not do by our own strength. But we will depend in the power of the Holy Spirit, who will be with us, giving us the strength to move on and to experience mighty victories in the mighty name of Jesus. I declare those victories for you in the name of Jesus Christ. 
I pray that the Lord will give you strength, uh, that the Lord will give you, you know, you know, motion, that you will move, you will not stagnate any longer. It doesn't matter how long it has been, you have been stuck in that one position, but a time of motion is coming. Praise the name of the Lord. That you're moving to the next level of your life. You're moving to the next level in your business, in your career, in the name of Jesus. And this is not just to excite us, but it is spiritual. Let me tell you, it is, starts with the spiritual realm. If you cannot conquer in the spiritual realm, be ready to fail in the physical. But when you go up in the spiritual and you fight in the spiritual and you get your victories up there, then manifestation of victories are guaranteed. Praise the name of the Lord. And you will start seeing changes in the areas that you have been struggling with. And you know, we have struggled with many things in many areas. But let me say that the Lord wants to give us great victories, great successes. Every time that we trust him and we trust in his spirit. That it is not by us, it is not by our power. Let me say this quickly. 2021, God is raising an army. He is raising an army. An army of people that will stand for their families. An army of people that will stand for their children. An army of women that will not allow things to continue the way they have been. An army of men that will say we are coming out of our cocoons. And we are going to do what God wants us to do. Amen. And that army is the army of God. Full of the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the power behind everything. Let me say, if we do not embrace the ministry of the Holy Spirit as a church, as individuals, my friend, all these that we are talking about can be good stories, but they can never be a reality in our lives. But I pray that 2021, we shall not be comfortable any longer. If you are not filled with the Holy Spirit, this is a time to ask the Lord, Lord, please come through, fill me with the power, fill me with the anointing, Fill me with the grace of God. Fill me with the anointing that I can be able to stand over my challenges, over my situations, over my circumstances, and be able to receive my victories in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. And that is where Paul says that we are not just conquerors. He says we are what? More than conquerors. And you know, in Romans 8, 37, you will hear that. Paul is saying that we are not, we are not just conquerors. Huh? We are more than conquerors. What shall separate us from the love of God? Is it famine? Is it luck? Is it what? And he said, above all, we are more than conquerors in the Lord Jesus. I was thinking about that. What is, what is to conquer? Because I believe God wants us to conquer. Because the siege is being lifted. He's lifting it away. Praise the name of the Lord. The ones that have been taking siege over your life, over your family, covering and stopping you from experiencing growth, covering and stopping you from... Exp they are, it's being lifted in the name of Jesus. Amen. And so Paul says that, you know, that we are more than conquerors in the Lord Jesus Christ. And, you know, a conqueror is a person that has fought and he has received his reward. That person, we can call him what? A conqueror. But when Paul says we are more than conquerors, he's saying, you don't have to be in the ring, but you're the one to carry the trophy. Praise the name of the Lord. It is the Lord fighting our battles. Amen. You know, it's saying that Jesus will come on the ring and he will be the one to fight. He will be the one to fight your enemies. But it is you that will carry the trophy up. When you carry the trophy up, then what are you saying? Who, who fought the battle? Jesus fought the battle. But who is carrying the trophy? I am carrying the trophy. So Jesus conquered. Then who am I? I am more than a conqueror. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Because I'm lifting the trophy. I didn't have to go and fight myself. That's why I'm saying in these spiritual battles that we're talking about, to experience recovery in 2021, when we do spiritual battles, my friend, I want you to remove every kind of thinking that it is going to be physical anywhere. It is nothing physical. Everything is in the spiritual. It is by prayer. 
It is by reading the word of God and understanding what God says, getting the promises of God. And once you get the promises of God, then you follow on those promises and you stand on them. Praise the name of the Lord. Until manifestation comes, you keep telling God, I'm standing on this word. You promise that you shall be with me, that you shall never leave me. You will remain with me to the very end. Amen. And as you stand on these promises, God starts to bring deliverances. God starts to bring manifestation. And as we walk right with him, as we allow the Holy Spirit to do the eternal work in our lives, changing us from the inside out, deliverances will start to happen in our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. So I'm more than a conqueror. Jesus went to the ring on the cross of Calvary when he said it is finished. He had done the battles, all the battles that you could have done in your life. He already did them on the cross and he said it is finished and he gave us the authority and he said I give you power. Ah, you shall be able to step on the head of the serpent. Praise the name of the Lord. You shall be able to step on them. You shall walk on them. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Because I am with you. I am giving the authority. Hey, praise the name of the Lord. Jesus has given us the authority. We are trampling over serpents and scorpions. And nothing shall hurt us. Why? Because the Lord already conquered. The Lord Jesus already conquered them. He conquered the devil. He conquered, you know, pain. He conquered diseases. He conquered poverty. He conquered all of those things. Why are we going on, you know, allowing ourselves to be bound again? And the Lord already gave us the victory. We're going to receive our victory in the name of Jesus. And you know, that took me back to a scripture that I, 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 I really enjoyed in Joshua chapter 10. And I was reading this and the Lord was giving me a lot of understanding and, and insight, you know, through these scriptures in Joshua chapter 10. And you can open that for me and you give me from verse number 16, Joshua 10, and give me from verse number 16. And I want you to, to understand that God wants us to carry the trophy. He wants us to lift the trophy. He is the one fighting. Uh, allow him to fight. Don't fight for yourselves. Don't fight for your own. Uh, but allow him to fight. Invite him. Get into the battle and tell God, I know this battle does not belong to me. It belongs entirely to you. Praise the name of the Lord. And Joshua chapter 10, the word of God says, But these five kings fled and hid themselves in the cave, in a cave at Makeda. And it was told Joshua saying, The five kings have been found hidden in the cave at Makeda. So Joshua wrote, said, Roll large stones against the mouth of the cave and set men by it to guard them. And do not stay there yourselves, but pursue your enemies and attack their rear guard. Do not allow them to enter their cities, for the Lord your God has delivered them into your hands. Then it happened. While well, Joshua and the children of Israel made an end of slaying them with very great slaughter, till they had finished, that those who escaped entered fortified cities. And all the people returned to the camp, and Joshua at Makeda, to Joshua at Makeda, in peace. No one moved his tongue against any of the children of Israel. Then Joshua said, Open the mouth of the cave and bring out those five kings to me from the cave. And they did so and brought out those five kings to him from the cave. The king of Jerusalem, the king of Hebron, the king of Jamuth, the king of Lachish, and the king of Eglon. Those were five kings. Uh-huh. Move on. And so it was when they brought out those kings to Joshua, that Joshua called all the men of Israel and said to the captains of the men of war who went with them, come near, put your feet on the necks of these kings. Hallelujah. Put what? Your feet on the necks of these kings. And they drew near and they uh, put their feet on their necks. 
Move on. Then Joshua said to them, Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed. Be strong and of good courage, for thus the Lord will do to all your enemies against whom you fight. And afterwards, Joshua struck them and killed them and hung them on five trees. And they were hanging on the trees till evening. Praise the name of the Lord. I want you to understand something. That Joshua, after he got the kings out of the cave, he told these guys, I want you to put your leg on their neck. Praise the name of the Lord. You know, that is very prophetic. It is, it is something that is, you are saying, you are under my feet. Praise the name of the Lord. You are under my feet. Poverty, you are under. Diseases, you are under. Sicknesses, you are under. Witchcraft, you are under. Praise the name of the Lord. Joshua told these people, bring those kings out. And you know, if you read the story backward, you will come to see. Joshua had already made a treaty with the Gibeonites. Now, Gibeonites were attacked. They were attacked. And when they were attacked by five kings, Gibeon was a very big city. It was very prosperous. And so these five kings wanted to take over. And so when they came, they sent a word to, to Joshua. We are under attack, Joshua. Please remember the treaty and come to our rescue. And the Bible says Joshua came the whole night. And when he arrived there, he came by surprise. These kings were not expecting that the Gibeonites will have any support from anywhere. But when he, Joshua came, the Bible does not talk about the Gibeonites fighting anywhere else. It was Joshua and his men. And he fought the whole time. God fighting your battles. Praise the name of the Lord. The Gibeonites made a treaty with Joshua and said, we will serve you. We will be for you, but just don't destroy us. And Joshua said, good enough. But now they called. When they heard that they were being attacked, these five kings were not attacking Joshua. They were not. They were attacking Gibeon. But Gibeon had an agreement with Joshua. Praise the name of the Lord. When the enemy comes to attack you, you remind him you have an arrangement with Jesus. You have a relationship with Jesus. And now you don't fight it yourself. You just call on him who is a fighter. And he comes and takes over. Praise the name of the Lord. When Joshua arrived in the morning, the Bible says he fought this man. He fought them because he got them by surprise. Ali were big of it. Go and read Joshua 10, the whole of it. You'll enjoy that story. And some of the men started running. And as they were running, the word of God says, God started hurling hailstones from heaven. God was involved. Mungu alianza kurusha mawe kutoka juu. And there were mawe yambao ni barafu, hailstones. Mawe makubwa ya barafu. Una chapwa na una freeze hapo chini. Praise the name of the Lord. And the Bible says that the men that died from the hailstones were much more than those that died from the sword. Whose battle was that? It was the Lord's battle. Praise the name of the Lord. The people that were trying to run away, they were attacked by God from heaven. He was throwing hailstones and he kicked them and they died. Many of them died. Those that tried to escape, they were followed on foot by the men of Joshua and they were killed. And a few of them managed to enter their city. They managed to enter their fortified cities. And then Joshua came back. But by that time, alikuwa meambiwa, you know what? All the kings, the five kings, they have hidden themselves in a cave. They have gone into a cave. And Joshua said, I don't want to be distracted by these ones. They are only five. Please, just put a big stone on that entrance and let us continue to pursue. Let us pursue the others. Make sure you guard this this entrance. Nobody comes out, nobody goes. And you also don't remain here. Just a few people here. All of us, let's go. And they went and they fought the battle and God was with them, fighting. And when they had finished, then they returned to Makeda. Praise the name of the Lord. And when they came to Makeda, they came and they, Joshua said, open that 
cave. And the cave was opened. And these jamas were brought out, the kings. And you know, you know when you have the king, you have everything, right? Because the king, if the king is destroyed, the armies have no choice. They have no, they have no direction. They are, they are left, you know, not knowing what else to do. All the five kings were in there. And when they were brought out, Joshua said, now bring them out to me and put them here. And they were lined up. And when they were lined up, he said, you captains, come, come, all of you, five of you, come. And I want you to put your leg on their neck. Even humiliation. He had not killed them. They were still alive. The kings, the enemies were humiliated. May God frustrate your enemies in the name of Jesus. Those that are trying to attack you, those that are trying to attack your family, may they be humiliated in the name of Jesus. He humiliated them by putting the leg of the, of the captains on their neck. You're king of Lakish. But now you are under my feet. Amen. You are the king of Eglon. I know you. You are mighty and strong. But now, you are under my feet. And you know what? It was very prophetic. What Joshua was saying, and I want you to give me that verse again. So when they brought them out and, uh, to, uh, to Joshua, Joshua called for all the men of Israel and said to the captains and the men of war who went with him, come, put your feet on the necks of these kings. And they drew near and put their necks, I mean their feet, on their necks. Next, give me the next one. Then Joshua said to them, do not be afraid, nor be dismayed. Be strong and of good courage for those. Uh, for thus the Lord will do to all your enemies against whom you fight. And I want to say to the people in Nakuru Happy Church, do not be afraid. Do not be dismayed. Be of good courage for thus says the Lord. To all of those your enemies who will try to fight you in the year 2021, thus you shall do to them in the mighty name of Jesus. They will come in, many of them, but do not be afraid. Do not be dismayed. Put your leg on their neck in the mighty name of Jesus. Some of them will call themselves diseases. Put your leg on the neck of that disease. It may call itself cancer. Put your leg on that neck and say, no, not in my body. In the mighty name of Jesus, refuse cancer in your body. Don't just say it is a family thing. No, no, no. Joshua, Aliwambia, and to all those that will try to fight against you, thus is what the Lord is going to do for them. Put your leg on their neck. Amen. That is prophetic. And when the servant of God talked about this recovery, it was not just a word. It was not just a popular thing. No. I believe with the whole of my heart there are businesses that have been under siege. There are children that have been under siege. There are couples, their relationship make were under siege. But 2021, like Joshua said, put your leg on the necks of your enemy. And you are saying, ah, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Every weapon that has been fashioned shall become not. It shall become nothing in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Go to the next verse. Give me the next one. And after Joshua, afterward, after now doing that prophetic action, after doing that, now Joshua took the sword. Amen. I want you to notice something. It is not the captains that put the legs that killed these people. It is Joshua. Amen. 
It is not you that is going to kill your enemies. It is the Lord. Amen. But God wants you to be courageous enough to put your leg there. And when you do it, give him the chance to kill. Amen. And, Joshua, and afterward, Joshua struck them and killed them. And after he killed them, he hung them on five trees. And they were hanging on those trees until evening. Now I asked myself, Umekanyaga. Sawa? Alafu? Sikichwe imetolewa? Si umawua? Joshua, be serious. Why do you want to hang a dead body? He's already dead. So ni wakuzika tu. But then the Lord reminded me, we are more than conquerors. Amen. Who did the fighting? Jesus. Amen. He was on the cross. He did the fighting. Who lifted the trophy? The church. Jesus does the fighting, but we receive the trophy. Amen. Now, when Joshua men stepped on these guys, who killed? It is Joshua. Sawa, sawa. Joshua came and killed these people. And after he killed them, who did the hanging? The men. Praise the name of the Lord. These men, they took them and our kahang kings, Juyamti. And they hanged them until the end of the day. And the Lord reminded me, Joshua will fight. The captains will lift the trophy. Jesus fought. The church lifts the trophy. We are more than conquerors. Praise the name of the Lord. These men remained hanged on the trees. And you know, hanging on the tree was also another prophetic thing. And I looked at it and I was seeing, these people, they were already sending a message to all the others. They were sending a message to all the other. Remember Joshua, after he took over from Moses, God told him to go and capture the land. Chukua land, capture all of it. And so they would go and fight, kill everybody, possess it. Go and fight, kill everybody there and possess it. Now, Joshua is doing just that. But now it has come to a point where these people have to be hanged on the tree. When they were hanged on the tree, Joshua was simply passing a message to all the other kings. This is notice. I have killed first my people have stepped on the neck of the kings I have killed the kings my people have hung the kings on the tree now listen all of you others wherever you are let this word get to you and quickly this is what I will do to you if you dare me praise the name of the Lord Ah, that was very prophetic Joshua was passing a message. And you know what happened? If you read the other verses after and you go and read for yourself, you will come and realize, and Joshua, now they entered into the fortified cities. Now Joshua and his men, after Memaliza the kings, the following day he went to the cities. He went to Lakish. He killed everybody in there and took the city. He went to Eglon, killed everybody in there and took the city. He went to all the five cities and he took all of them prophetically. When you put your leg on this, the enemy, then you're saying, I'm ready to receive what belongs to me in there. And you know, in the cities kulikuwa na utajiri. In the cities kulikuwa na chakula. In the cities kulikuwa na vitu. In the cities kulikuwa na mifugo. Kulikuwa na everything. Joshua, he killed everything and took back everything. That is recovery. And I'm declaring in the name of Jesus, you are going to recover in this year in the mighty name of Jesus. Just know that you are not fighting this battle alone, but God is on your side. Put your leg on your enemy and you say, ah, God, and you know, he promised that you shall step on them. You shall step on snakes and scorpions. Nothing shall hurt you. And this is what I'm doing. I'm stepping on you, King Eglon. You are the one that has been stopping my prosperity. My leg is on your neck. And I receive my victory. 
Rise up on your feet in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we receive the victory today. For we know the battle does not belong to us. The battle belongs to you. For we know that you are the one that gives us victory. Oh God of glory, Isaiah 59 and verse 19, your word says, uh, So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west uh, and his glory from the rising of the sun. When Against him, uh, I am declaring a standard in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus, uh, when the enemy comes to you like a flood, like a mighty flood, uh, the Lord is going to ra raise a standard in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, your deliverance is here. Your deliverance is here. But you will not do it uh, without the power of the Spirit of God. Uh, you will not do it uh, without the anointing of God in your life. Uh, you will not get it uh, if you do not allow him that is able to battle. The one that was with Joshua. The one that was with Zerubbabel. Uh, if you will not allow him uh, the Spirit of God. Uh, this shall just remain a good story. But I declare for you in the name of Jesus, uh, the year 2021, uh, the year of power and victory, the year of recovery. Oh, may the Spirit of God uh, come upon you today in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, hey, may the Spirit of the Lord uh, fall upon each and every feeble heart uh, to know that you will not hide any longer. He will strengthen you like he strengthened Joshua. He, he will strengthen you like he strengthened uh, Gideon. Gideon. He will strengthen you to fight uh, and to step on your enemy. In the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, Holy Spirit of the living God, I thank you. I thank you that you are in this place even this morning. Uh, those things that we have been struggling with in our families. Uh, addictions in our families, in our children. Uh, ah, Lord, uh, kind of drugs that we have seen uh, in our homes, in our children. Uh, Father, we are coming against them. Uh, we are putting our legs on the neck of the drugs. And we are declaring in the name of Jesus, uh, you strong men uh, that supplies drugs in the lives of the children of God. Uh, Right now, we are putting our legs on your neck and we are declaring in the name of Jesus, uh, you have no authority, you have no power. Yes, in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, if you can pray in tongues now, just switch now. In the mighty name of Jesus, uh, just pray now in tongues. Re Ramayanto Roboboza Re Kasalabaganta Ramama. We are taking authority that we have been given. Uh, yes, the authority of the name of Jesus. Uh, the authority that is able to pull down uh, every kind of stronghold. Uh, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They are mighty through God. Uh, we are declaring this morning, uh, according to Ephesians chapter 6, uh, let every weapon uh, all of flesh be destroyed. Let the power of the Spirit uh, take over in the name of Jesus. Uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, we dismantle every kind of uh, every kind of a uh, planting of the enemy against our families. Uh, Kila mjengo wa mapepo Tuna ubomoa sasa Kila minara ilio jengwa Kinyume na jamii zetu Umasikini Tunaweka migu yetu Kwa shingo yako Tuna kutangazia sasa Huna nguvu tena Huna uwezo Huna uwezo Roho wa umasikini Hauna uwezo tena You have no power You have no authority Over the children of God I release her success and prosperity to the children of God we war against you yes for we know not by might not by power but by the spirit of the sovereign Lord therefore we put you right under our feet in the name of Jesus Rema shanda la bakata rabababus. Kuna jamii zimeishi kuteseka. Kuna jamii zimeishi kuteseka na laana. Laana hata hamuelewi zinatoka wapi. Mambo ambayo yanakuzuilia, mambo ambayo yanakuzuilia kusonga mbele. Laana za kiukoo tulitubu Jumapili iliyopita na hata leo tunatubu tena. Bwana tusamehe. 
Samehe jami zetu Samehe jami zetu Forgive us our Lord Forgive us oh God Shalabakanta rabababa we shall overcome in the year 2021. We shall receive our victory. The year 2021, we shall receive our success. The year 2021, we shall possess our possessions in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. I don't know what you are struggling with in your family. Some families are struggling with poverty. Some str families are struggling with witchcraft. Uh, some families are struggling, you know, with kind of, um, you know, cycles of defeat. Cycles that you cannot come out of a cycle. You find yourself just going back and forth. You try to come out, you go back again. Cycles of defeat. Um, some children uh, in families have, do not get married. Uh, some girls do not get married. Ah, those are cycles, cycles of defeat. We are declaring today, you strong men, our legs are on your neck. Our children will marry again. In the mighty name of Jesus, our young people will marry again. In the mighty name of Jesus, businesses shall go to another level. In the name of Jesus, oh, shakata ganayanda na bababa sika. Could you be in this service this morning and you're saying, Pastor, please pray with me. I'm not born again. I wish I can say what you're saying. I wish I can believe God like you're believing this morning. I'm not born again, but I desire, I desire to be born again so that God can also help me. God can also help me put my leg on the neck of the enemy. Mm. Where are you? I would like to pray with you. If you're that pastor and you're, and you're desiring to to receive the Lord this morning to come back where are you I want to pray with you do you have anybody like that or maybe you were born again sometime but you know pressures of life you went back I want to declare to you 2021 you cannot declare victory you cannot talk about recovery if you don't know the Lord it will be a good story for others not for you but when you come and allow him to be the one to fight this battle, he will help you. Return to him. If you are a backslider, lift up your hand. I want to pray with you. Come in the name of Jesus. Just come in the mighty name of Jesus. Just come in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Who else is joining my brother saying, I don't want to remain the same. But I want to come. I want to come. I want to come back and know him. I want to come back and know him. Pastor, please help me pray with him. In the name of Jesus. Who else is coming? You're saying, Pastor, I have been a backslider. I have been feeling so guilty. Ah, every time I think about church, I feel so guilty. I just desire that I would come back. I would be restored. Where are you? The Lord wants to restore you today. He is here right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. He wants to restore you. Where are you? Come. Come. In the name of Jesus. We give you glory, God. We give you glory. Hmm? Alan, please give me that song. As Pastor pray, pray, prays with my brother here in the name of Jesus. We want to sing this song that says, In heavenly armor, we will enter the land. The battle belongs to the Lord. Hallelujah. In heaven, Leah, we'll enter the land. The battle belongs. No weapon that's fashioned against us will stand. The battle belongs to the Lord. We'll sing glory all night. Oh, and
In heavenly amount, in heavenly amount, we'll enter the land. The battle belongs to the Lord. No weapon, no weapon that's fashioned against us shall stand. The battle. Give me the next one. Power of darkness comes in like a flood. The battle belongs to the Lord. Come on, sing with me. He's raised the best and the power of his blood. The battle belongs. One more time, say one more time. When the powers of darkness come seen like a flood, the battle belongs to the Lord. Somebody declare, He's raised the past and the power of His word. of Jericho came down you know Joshua had been given the instructions that you will go through this wall the first day, the second day, the third day and on the seventh day you have to go through it seven times and on the seventh time you have to shout 
and you will get a victory. And the walls came tumbling down. Praise the Lord. This morning, I don't know what is standing before you like a mountain. I don't know what is that wall that is so strong. We've just declared that power and might and strength belongs to our God. I want you to make a crazy shout. I will be counting one, two to seven. And on the seventh, I want you to believe whatever it is, it is prophetic. You see, Joshua told these people, put your legs on their neck. It was prophetic. There was nothing about the leg and the neck. But it was so prophetic, you were saying, whatever I put my legs on like this, I have conquered. Put your legs like this. Do it like this. And don't fall. Ah, do it like this. Yes, you're saying sickness, you're under my feet. Every authority, you're under my feet. Dominions, you're under my feet. Powers of witchcraft, you're under my feet. In the name of Jesus. Now, step on it now. In the name of Jesus. Now I want to say one to seven. Now one. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready to receive your victory? It is prophetic. And I said, when we do it in the spiritual realm, expect it to happen in the physical. It shall not manifest in the physical before it starts in the spiritual. Two. Are you ready? Are you ready? Hey, sickness is now, you know, getting threatened. My diseases are now getting threatened. All forces of darkness are getting threatened. Three, are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. I'm ready to receive my victory. I am putting my leg on the enemy in the mighty name of Jesus. Victory is guaranteed. Are you ready? Four, yeah, five, yeah, six, yeah. Are you ready now? Seven. 